Kitco Mining special coverage of the Mining Investment Event of the North is brought to you by EMX Royalty Corp. Manganese has been gaining prominence as a battery metal. Matt James, he is president and CEO of Euro Manganese. Matt, welcome to Kitco. Thank you very much, nice to be here. Explain how manganese fits within the battery metal complex. So manganese is a very important metal in the cathodes of the, of the batteries. So any battery method, uh, cathode that's got NMC, the M is manganese. And it's 10 to 20% at the moment, but actually, because of its uh, very competitive price compared to the other battery metals, there are many companies developing manganese-rich cathode chemistry. So we're going to see manganese play a more and more important role going forward. Um, I don't want to get over my skis here, but when you know you hear about your nickels, you hear about cobalt, you hear about lithium and graphite and how they add various properties to uh, batteries. Briefly explains how manganese works and what is it, how it would be typically used in batteries. Very similar to uh, the cobalt, it stabilizes the nickel uh, in the cathode and in a that, that, that's its key role. So you can substitute cobalt for manganese. Let's talk about uh, the supply picture right now. Who is uh, who's producing manganese? So the, what we're talking about here is high purity manganese, uh, not the ferromanganese that goes into the steel industry. And most of the high purity manganese today is made out of China, with a little bit coming out of South Africa that goes to Japan and made into cathodes in Japan as well and uh, demand side right now. So, you know, you, you take some of these other metals in the past, like nickel, and then they had uh, demand in terms of like stainless steel or something as well too, but things to be shifting. So what's demand right now for manganese and what are we looking at? So, I mean, the total manganese market is 22 million tonnes. Only 100,000 tonnes today goes into the batteries, right? But by 2030, that's closer to a million tonnes. So the high purity manganese has got to increase tenfold through to 2030. And it's not a lack of ore, it's a lack of the refining capacity to produce what is essentially a pharmaceutical grade, high purity manganese product. And I assume that uh, out of those producers, you have a very small amount of people that are actually producing like the high purities, right? Correct, yeah. yeah, yeah. Tell us about uh, the project then uh, that you have in Czech Republic. Yeah, so the project in the Czech Republic uh, is a tailings deposit that we are going to produce the high purity manganese and will be the only primary producer in Europe. Uh, and as we process this tailings, will actually remediate uh, what is an environmental problem at the moment from a historical mine that, that stopped in the 1970s. Uh, help me out now, when you're in your presentation, you talk about the importance of location, the importance of them, because you know in Europe, they're building all of the battery metals and things like that. But yeah. I still, and then also uh, Neil Froneman with Sabanya Stillwater will say the same thing about getting a location in Europe for uh, supplying uh, into the battery metal space. Why is that important? Because I mean, it, it's a commodity still. I mean, if you produce it somewhere else, why is it? Uh, why is there an advantage to having it in Europe? I think the Europeans already wanted to build the full value chain in Europe, even before the terrible events that we see now in, in Ukraine, and the geopolitical environment now has just sort of supercharged the desire for Europe to be more self-sustaining of these critical metals which are really underpinning an industrial revolution, you know, the energy transition uh, into electrification. Tell us, go back to the project again as well too, what kind of uh, operation is going to be? So we're essentially going to be a, a high purity chemical process. Because we're dealing with tailings, the, the mining side is very simple, just it's already ground, it's already, so it's a free dig, put it into the process, it's a magnetic separation, purification uh, to produce the final product. Um, you know, it's a 50,000 tons of manganese metal equivalent for 25 years. That's the mine life of the project. Um, uh, and, you know, the, the project will, will continue to operate even beyond that by potentially processing recycled material that needs purification, you know, in 25 years time.
What were the tailings left over from? What did it used to be? So it was an old pyrite mine okay. um, back in the Czechoslovakia days. Yeah. So it wasn't, you know, the tailings are not lined, hence the environmental problems there. When we put our tailings back, um, it will be neutralized, dry stacked, properly lined to stop that ongoing uh, environmental pollution that's currently happening. Matt, uh, let's just talk about your background a bit as well, too, because you know a little bit about this stuff. Sure. Uh, <laughs> So I'm a material scientist by degree, but uh, you know, worked in uh, Deutsche Bank for three years, McKinsey for four years, but then I got into natural resources. And I was at Linus Corporation, the rare earth company, for, uh, for nine years, right at the start of that journey. And there are some very similar you know, um, characteristics between what we did at Linus and what we need to do at Neuromanganese in terms of development of the project, offtake contracts, financing. You know, which will all be happening over the next 12 months at Euromanganese. So you've had kind of experience, what you say, kind of around, like, I guess back we used to call it industrial, almost minerals in a way as yeah. well too, but uh, certainly now it's become kind of critical or green metals, uh, whatever Critical you green say. metals, yeah, I've done it before, so. Uh, now some projects uh, to uh, develop in uh, Europe have been tricky. Uh, there's been uh, what's happened uh, with Serbia and trying to get the lithium mine that's happening there. Yes. Uh, Berkeley Energy, uh, when they've been trying to get uranium going in uh, Spain. How are we doing right now with Czech Republic? So Czech is a very mining friendly country. There, mm -hmm. there are mining operations there already. And the fact that we're remediating uh, an environmental pollution means that we've got very strong local support. Um, the Czech team have done a great job in, in being transparent, communicating with the, with the uh, local community. We've just signed a land, off, uh, a land access agreement with one of the communities. The other community that's close to us has just rezoned uh, the area on our tailings as a mining, mining use. So those are just indications that the local community is very supportive. If we go up to the Czech government, we've got a, a tax break from the Czech government. And then at the EU level, this project is very visible as well. And we have EBRD, the European Bank of Reconstruction and Development, as one of our largest shareholders. Um, so we're getting good European support, you know, as well. You're funded? We have $30 million in the bank today. And that should get us through to the middle of next year. Um, we are about to appoint our project financing advisor um, and we're just about to release the feasibility study in the next few weeks, which will give the project economics. But it's looking quite robust at the moment. Um, and then putting that project finance in place is obviously you know, the major focus for the next 12 months. So we might need a little bit of top up funding between now and, and, and sort of drawdown of that debt and equity. But, you know, it's nice to have $30 million in the bank at the moment. Uh, I want to take a bit of a diversion here, just because I happen to have you here. Linus has been in the headlines right now. They had a $120 million uh, funding arrangement uh, that they had uh, with the Defense Department. Bring us up to date with um, the uh, rare earth space right now. Um, you know, it seems uh, what has been, because of your experience in Linus, it goes back uh, early to the last decade. What have been some of the highlights in the industry, certainly like Western highlights or Western developments? Well, I think everybody now knows about rare earths, which certainly wasn't the case a decade ago. And particularly neodymium, presidium, NDPR have become much more, uh, because of their price increases, have become much more important in this suite of rare earths that rare earth projects have. There are now a number of Western projects which are advancing, uh, both in, uh, in South America but also in Canada. So uh, Vital Metals is actually the CEO, Jeff Atkins, worked with me at Linus. Uh, I think they're doing really well. Um, They're the project up in North Canada, is that yes, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, China still, you know, um, has the vast majority of the market, but Linus is now, you know, fully up and operating, and you know has twenty percent of the of, of the market. So that that dominance that China had when I was at Linus, you know, with ninety five percent, it's been diminished, which is which is good to see in that, you know, there are more, more 
because the demand is there, more operations outside of China to supply the, you know, the vital metals for, you know, the electric vehicle batteries, wind turbines, the, the magnets are really where, where the market's at now. Linus has had some nice quarters, as you say, out of the demand for magnets and then also the prices have actually been supporting. Is that going to be carrying forward? Do you see that there's actually, the prices should stay strong? I, I think, you know, with this energy transition, the same of the demand that we're seeing in the battery market, the rare earth market and the magnet market needs to be in step with that in terms of supply because the demand is very similar. Um, so I don't see the prices of rare earths, particularly NDPR, going down anytime soon. Um, and, you know, like, like with manganese, you know, we're going to see strong long term because we're, we're entering a critical mineral super cycle with this energy transition that's happening. And that will keep prices high for, for quite some time. NDPR being uh, the rare earths uh, that uh, have the uh, magnetic properties, correct? Okay. Um, lastly, Matt, uh, you were talking about that you have the money and then you're working again towards the feasibility. So, so our, Does, what, what's your milestones, I guess, yeah, that's a, to, yeah. to round out. So, yeah. so the milestones, which I think are gonna be a real catalyst for a stock re-rating for us is we actually have a demonstration plant arriving on site in you know, the Czech Republic in July. Um, and then that's going to be you know, assembled and commissioned by September. That will be a strong catalyst uh, and milestone. We have at the appointment of the financial advisor and we have our feasibility study being released in early July. Um, so that's only a few weeks away. Um, and then off-take contracts. We have five MOUs at the moment, which are moving to off-take contracts. And we want to have those in place by the end of this year, because we need that to underpin then the, obviously the debt financing for the project. Um, and then, you know, other small things even, uh, but important, you know, our life cycle assessment uh, will, be, will be published in probably in July after the feasibility study. And that's showing that we have a CO2 footprint. It's about half of the incumbent industry. So really important for our customer base, which is EV. Uh, you know, they're really focused on, you know, reducing the CO2 footprint of their supply chain. So those are the key catalysts uh, and milestones for the stock this year. Yeah. Matt, thanks for telling your story. Good luck with your milestones. Thanks very much. Nice to be here. Thanks again. He's Matt James. He is CEO of Euromanganese. My name is Michael McRae. You're watching Kitco Mining here at Mining Event of the North in Quebec City. Kitco Mining special coverage of the Mining Investment Event of the North is brought to you by EMX Royalty Corp.